Welcome to the Alabama Way, WPXH's public affairs program, providing a forum for local information and community support. If you'd like to be a guest on our program, please call us at 870-4404 or fax us at 870-0544. Good morning, and thank you for being here with us on The Alabama Way. This morning, we're with our segment, Get Connected, with Trish Crane. We're going to see what Trish is bringing to us today. And also, we've got a representative from Gold's Gym who's going to be talking about what to do after the Thanksgiving holiday. So you stay with us, and we'll be right back here on The Alabama Way. Welcome to Get Connected. Um, my name is Tricia Crane. I'm Executive Director of the Alabama School Connection, which is a website, a news site focused on K-12 education issues in Alabama. And I am very happy to be uh, part of the uh, family here, and we're having a, a new segment, this Get Connected segment, where we're trying to help parents and family members understand a little bit more about um, what's happening in our schools. Today, I'm thrilled to have Jerry Tate uh, from the Birmingham Council of PTAs, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about what PTA is, what PTA does, and how you can be a part of a PTA. Uh, I really like the PTA model, and we'll go into that a little bit later. Okay. But Jerry, if you would, tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of how you came to um, become a member of the PTA and your position. You hold a, a you wear a few <laughs> hats in PTAs in Birmingham. Uh, yeah, correct. Uh, and uh, happy to. Uh, I am a uh, uh, Birmingham City School parent of uh, two current um, kids that are uh, actually in school, or two that have uh, graduated. Uh, the PTA uh, became involved uh, a few years back. Uh, used it primarily as an advocacy group uh, when I was a father. Uh, uh, got engaged with the situation that uh, my child had at a school and I went into the school and I was not impressed uh, with what I saw uh, with uh, producing an environment that was conducive to learning and as a father uh, that opened my eyes uh, how could I expect my child to be able to learn in an environment uh, that was uh, that was of such so I had to do some soul searching within myself and, and uh, decided that uh, it was about time that I, if I was going to expect them to learn that I needed to make sure that we provided an environment uh, that was conducive for them to learn in. So I looked for ways to do that and um, looked around the school, uh, found out that it was better uh, to do, I, that was only so much that I could do by myself. So I looked for avenues that uh, would help me to be able to help my child um, to learn, and uh, came across the uh, the PTA, which was uh, wasn't um, too active in the school that where I found the issue, but uh, we worked with that school, uh, worked with that PTA board, and became more active, and we were able to affect change in that school. Wonderful, mm -hmm. and that that's a success story. That's what you want to hear about, you Correct. know. And and there are a lot of these success stories out in individual PTAs. I would like to take a moment and just make the distinction between a PTA and a PTO. Mm -hmm. I get that question a lot. Um, for me, the simple way to explain it is that the A in PTA stands for advocacy. Correct. Um, PTA is technically Parent Teacher Association. PTO, Parent Teacher Organization. Mm -hmm. And in the in the high school, sometimes you'll see you know PTSO or Correct. you know with the um, the student um, aspect being added to it. The the PTA has a structure that allows a real seat at the table of decision making in a school, um, which a PTO typically does not unless it has structured itself specifically that way, which if you you know look at a, a sample set of bylaws for a PTO, they're very different than they are for a PTA. I personally prefer the PTA model. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's fair to say. I like the idea of parents having a legitimate seat at the table. And it does require work, um, but you know it, it's as much or as little as you choose to put into it. We'll get into that in just a minute. I just wanted to make that distinction. And I I'm, I'm, have had some personal experience with the Birmingham mm -hmm. Council of PTAs and have been extremely impressed with the level of leadership and advocacy and training. Uh, and I do want to talk about that a little bit. First, let's talk about the Birmingham Council. What is the Council of PTAs versus a school-based PTA? Uh, well, as a council, uh, we have a uh, dynamic president uh, who is um, uh, Monroe Hargrove, 
Uh, we have uh, also uh, Vice President, President-elect is uh, Ms. Donna Thomas, yeah. uh, who has been involved in PTAs uh, for, I would say, centuries. I don't want to, oh, <laughs> yes. not quite that long, but mm -hmm. uh, she has uh, been in and out of PTAs for about 25 to 30 years now. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, the, the council's responsibility is uh, primarily to make sure that the local units have everything that they need to be an effective advocacy group for children. Uh, we make sure that the officers of the local council are trained uh, adequately to be able to work effectively in the schools uh, to, uh, to promote change within that school, which teach them how to work with the school administration how to go and sit down with the principals to let them know the goals of the PTA. Uh, if the PTA in a, in a uh, specific school is not active, the council is there uh, to, uh, to make sure that they, ha they are active and that they, they are effective in that school. Uh, we uh, train them on record keeping. Uh, we also um, hold uh, training not only for uh, local unit officers, but also for parents within uh, the district to make sure that they are, are educated and that they feel comfortable going in and advocating for their children. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. That training um, and the leadership training and the skills. You know, we as parents really are not born with those skills to go right. sit down <laughs> and take a problem to a principal uh, that. You know, you always start with the teacher, right, mm -hmm. if there's something Correct. going on in your child's classroom. But oftentimes what I have found that folks that are with PTAs, they're looking at a bigger picture. They're not really focused only on their child Correct. and their child's classroom. And that, to me, uh, is the spirit of bringing people together um, a around some sort of common goal. So thinking about uh, a PTA and, and the training aspect of it. I know that some of our viewers may think, training, that sounds like time. <laughs> but these are valuable soft skills, I guess you'd say, that we really aren't equipped with. Give us an idea of maybe one, um, one of your training sessions. You were mentioning about the, uh, you know, uh, going in talking with the principal about a problem. What might you learn in one of these trainings? Right. We, 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 you know, we talk about uh, the pillars of the, uh, of the PTA, you know, sharing power um, within the school. And then we, we, we break those segments down into different parts of a, uh, of, of a training day. Uh, we'll get the parents, we'll get the officers and parents and community members also there invited uh, to come in and also principals. We want the principals to be there so they can be aware of what the PTA is all about. Mm -hmm. We want them to, uh, because it's no secret that the PTA is there to, to advocate uh, for children. Right. The model, every child, one voice. So right. uh, when an issue arises in the school, you know, the PTA is going to be there front and center. So we don't want um, we don't want to catch the administrators by surprise. Right. Um, they they love to have PTAs within their school. So we bring the officers together. Uh, we 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 go over uh, the the pillars of the PTA. We break those out into segments. For instance, we'll use sharing power, and we will get the officers together and we'll talk about what sharing power means. Uh, the PTA is an organization that are millions of members strong across the nation. So we have ideas coming from millions of parents, mm -hmm. millions of community members of what sharing power means. And also from those local units, you know, they have um, unique circumstances within their school that they can come and they can share with the other officers and with the parents. We tell them mm -hmm. what sharing power means. We tell them what sharing power does not mean. Mm -hmm. um, we're there to work with the administration uh, within the school. We're not there to run the school. Uh, we make sure that the parents know that, uh, you know, the PTA is a sounding board, but we're not a hammer that where right. you can go in there and, and beat the administration down. We work together to come up with solutions that will benefit the children. Uh, sometimes that works in favor of the parent. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes it, it, it may not work in favor of the parent. Uh, mm -hmm. We may have to abide um, by the rules and the regulation of a specific school and uh, the parents need to understand that. So we teach them how to go into a school, mm -hmm. how to have a conversation with the teacher and not be intimidated, mm -hmm. uh, how to, uh, if necessary, how to uh, escalate uh, a problem from, from a teacher uh, to a principal level 
uh, without uh, properly, um, without being combative, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that we're keeping uh, the focus on the improvement of education for the children. That's wonderful. Uh, and, and I have attended some of these leadership trainings, mm -hmm. um, which are very, very yep. helpful. And you can't, you can't ever just go once. You need to you listen. <laughs> and you need yeah. to keep going. You, you, you have to keep going. Well, and I'll tell you, hold these thoughts. We're going to come back. We're going to talk uh, a little bit more with Jerry Tate from the Birmingham Council of PTAs and also a Birmingham PTA uh, officer uh, at your school. Correct. Um, and um, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm Tricia Crane. Um, you're watching Get Connected, which is a segment that we have uh, talking about how parents can get involved with their schools and some of the issues that are in schools. And today we are continuing a conversation with Jerry Tate, um, who's with the Birmingham Council of PTAs and Birmingham PTA, uh, school-based PTA. Um, what better way to get involved? in your child's learning than through the PTA. And the nice structure of a PTA allows you to plug in. Thank you again for being here. I really awesome. appreciate this conversation. Thanks um, for having me. I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, sometimes joining a PTA can be intimidating for a parent and they don't know what to expect. Um, some folks think of PTAs and, uh, as cliques mm -hmm. and they certainly can ev evolve into cliques. But Correct. what I find most of the time is that parents they are willing to accept new members and new people working in committees <laughs> and uh, how does one, let's say I'm new to the district or let's say that you know I've just moved in, my child has started kindergarten and I want to be a part of a PTA. I know that generally speaking there's a recruiting sort of period at the beginning of school, there's an opportunity to sign up. Correct yeah. uh, and that's part of that training that we talked about earlier is uh, membership and how to, how to gain membership and how to keep membership. Uh, when what we encourage most of the schools do and what we do at my, at my local school is at the first of the year is when you primarily registration period is when you're going to see about 90 95 percent of your parents mm -hmm. so uh, we do a big promotion period then where we you know set up a registration table mm -hmm. uh, we have members that are there manning the tables throughout the day uh, and that's one of the first things that they see when they walk into the building mm -hmm. is uh, is parents because that's one of the uh, things that the district is promoting promoting now parental involvement to try to uh, move the gauge the needle for student achievement mm -hmm. so we're we're encouraging parents to become involved and one of the best ways to do that is through the PTA so we have the big promotion period where we have the table set up uh, forms out and then the things that the PTA do pictures of the things that the PTA have done through the years, yeah. video running of, uh, of the kids and the parents uh, at different events uh, that are not necessarily sponsored by the PTA, but where uh, parental involvement is there and is visible. And uh, we, we encourage the parents to join. We tell them the benefits of, uh, of becoming a member, of having a huge advocacy arm not just locally, not just statewide, but nationally. Right. Uh, we get to uh, have a seat at the table when they're uh, drawing up policy that will affect our children. We go back to the school lunch program. PTA is there at the table, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that the parents and the children's voice is being heard. Uh, when we talk about um, uh, student achievement, uh, the things that are going to be used to measure student achievement, we are there at that, as that advocacy arm when they're drafting the legislation that's going to affect our children. So uh, as the more members that we get, the louder our voice can become. The more members that, that we get locally at the school level, also uh, the more impactful our voice will become. Right. Uh, so we encourage parents to join. Uh, there, are, there is a, uh, a membership dues uh, because uh, when you're advocating, uh, when, when you're uh, in the legislature, there are certain costs that are associated with being able to do that. Very, very minimal costs. Mm -hmm. uh, most PTA's <clears throat> membership dues are range from about maybe seven to ten dollars mm -hmm. uh, per household. Wow. So you could have a household with one member or a household with ten members. Uh, that membership due covers them. Uh, there are benefits to the dues. You know, you get discounts. 
uh, at certain stores, right. Right. along with being that advocacy, being able to speak up for the children, being able to impact legislation. You know, there are a few uh, also uh, uh, tangibles that, that you can realize immediately when you become a member and you get that, that PTA card. Not only do you feel empowered, but you can take it to the store and you could receive additional discounts also. That's very interesting. You know, I, I forget about that sometimes because <laughs> I'm so concerned about getting parents yeah. to that decision-making table, right? It, it is. Well, that, that, you know, it's hard to say, well, then why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you become a member of, of the PTA? And yet we still struggle to get we do. parents to join. Uh, I think some parents maybe fear that they're going to be immediately called to work, uh, <laughs> make phone calls, man booths, or, or this kind of thing. But really, there are activities for the whole range of people who are available. I mean, parents are busy. Parents are very, very are. busy. Put a strain on PTAs nationwide. They, they uh, the whole model of the PTA uh, it, surviving as long as it has shows that it actually works. So, so let me ask you this. If a parent, if they miss that registration, you know, maybe they, maybe registration can cost a lot of money, right? Correct. If they, if they miss that registration or maybe they don't have the funds available, how do you get involved? I mean, can you sign up at any point you during can, the year? You, you can become, everybody is invited to, uh, to be a member of PTA. There are paid members and there are non-members. Mm -hmm. uh, paid members, you know, re receive certain privileges, voting privileges, mm -hmm. uh, things that receive certain reports, but everybody can become a member of the, of the PTA. Uh, there we have PTA, PTSA, which at the high school and middle school level, students also can join. Uh, they can join all throughout the year. Uh, we we run promotions throughout the year mm -hmm. uh, within the local school and also within the unit where we're uh, doing membership drive. Parents uh, not only can parents join, not only can students join, but we also encourage community members to join because what happens in our school affects the entire community. If the school mm -hmm. is not successful, the community is not going to be successful. What happens within a school affects their affects the neighborhood. So we try to get neighborhood officers involved. We, we inform them on what's going on within the school. Uh, we try to get the business community involved and to join so that they can also have a seat at the table. And uh, if for some reason the local unit at a particular school is not active, uh, we have what we call uh, Alabama All, where uh, a parent or a community, community member can join uh, Alabama All, and then uh, they will become a, a PTA member uh, also. But it's very, very easy to join. Uh, one of the things that we try to do when we're recruiting members is make sure that the old stigma that used to be associated with PTA uh, is, is pushed aside. Mm -hmm. We promote advocacy. We promote the every child one voice where we tell the parents, this is what we're doing within our particular school. Uh, these are some of the things that we've been able to accomplish uh, when, we, when, when the PTA has a seat at the table. These are some of the things that are happening. Uh, your rights are protected. Your parent rights are protected. If you need an, uh, um, an advocacy arm to advocate for something uh, that may be a little bit more uh, powerful than you're able to deal with, uh, not, if we can't deal with it at the local level, we have state PTA uh, officers that can also uh, help. So we let them see the benefits of it. Uh, the downside of it is just, um, it's just uh, dramatic hmm. where parental involvement uh, decreases uh, and there is no advocacy uh, for the children. So uh, we, we make sure that we promote that every child one voice, even if a child or family member is not a member of a PTA we're going to speak up for what's right for that child and for mm -hmm. that family. That's wonderful. Um, I think that part of the reason the Alabama School Connection exists is to you know, make sure that there's information available love to families. Love that group. I, I, I love Alabama Connection. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we try, as, a, as PTA officers, we try to make sure that we feed parents a lot of the right information. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it's kind of hard pulling from your local schools, mm -hmm. from your local school district, but Alabama Connect has found a way to grab the relevant data that we need and to put it in a format that is easily readable and understandable for the parents. And we take that information, we feed it to our parents and they're empowered with the numbers that they need to go to their school and, mm -hmm. and to their administration and say, I'm aware of what's going on within my district, within my school. 
uh, what can we do to move the needle forward? Well, thank you. That was <laughs> that was totally unexpected, and I appreciate that plug. That is, mm -hmm. that really is why the Alabama School Connection is important to me because I want to be able to support. Um, the advocacy efforts of parents, and it is hard to get information. And, and, and it does. Specifically, I'll, I'll speak to, if I have a minute, the, uh, the information that, uh, the, the write-up that Alabama Connect did that explained how to view and how to understand the new testing results that are coming out. Well, you know what? Let's hold that thought, okay. because I would like to talk about that. I th this is an awesome opportunity to, to get invested if you haven't been before. So we'll be back in just a moment with more with Jerry Tate. And we're back. We're speaking today with Jerry Tate. Um, right before the break, we were getting into a, a good discussion about <laughs> Uh, the kinds of things that parents, PTAs, help parents understand. Um, but now I want to get a little bit more specific about what it is exactly that parents can, can uh, take a hold of and really get involved in their children's education. Engaged, I guess, is really the word that I prefer. We talked a little bit about test scores. Um, we've started a new test in Alabama, the ACT Aspire, which is given in grades 3 through 8. Uh, it's given in the spring. That is a, uh, there are additional tests, uh, but we're doing, let's focus a little bit on the Aspire. Um, those results tell us a lot about where our children are in terms of how they will march towards the ACT, which is that ultimate um, college readiness test. Right. And then we're also adding the work keys component, which will help with the career tech end of things. But we were about to talk about why is it, why do you feel it's so important that parents understand what those standardized test scores tell us? We as parents need to know uh, how our kids measure up. Uh, we need to know what they're doing in school uh, before they get to high school and get ready to graduate. Uh, oftentimes uh, what I've heard from a, a lot of our parents is that uh, they uh, we haven't been as, in, as involved as we should have been. Uh, we hadn't been as informed as we should have been. I should have known uh, three years ago that my child was not on track to graduate. Mm -hmm. uh, I should have known what the problem was. Uh, and uh, the new test um, is supposed to, to help us to be able to gauge that. You know, we've gone from the Stanford Achievement Test when I was in school mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. ARP test a few years ago, and now we're at the ACT Aspire. Well, these kids are bringing home, are going to bring home these colorful pages of information and the parents may or may not know how to read that and how to interpret, how to measure how their children uh, uh, is, is doing. So mm -hmm. we as a PTA found that as a wonderful opportunity to be able to inform the parents on how to, uh, how to read those results and a wonderful gauge on how to determine how their children is doing at their local school, but also how they measure up uh, nationally. Uh, there may be times, you know, if a, if a district or if a school is not doing particularly well, uh, that parent may not receive the necessary information, uh, to, the necessary format to be able to decipher the information and to determine if their school is or their child is performing well or not. Mm -hmm. So we found that parents are the best decision, uh, the decision maker for their children's education. So we want them to become informed. We want them to have relevant and write information. We provide them with the avenue to be able to interpret what they had received mm -hmm. and then let them make an informed decision about their children's education. I mentioned Alabama Connect uh, provided uh, us with uh, a format to be able to disseminate to the parents, to be able to read the results that the children are bringing home. It told us, you know, what to look for. Uh, if we found a problem in a particular area, what question we need to go and ask the teacher and ask the administrator, uh, what are the, you know, what, what is the track for improvement? And we got that out to the parents, and guess what? The parent utilized it. Uh, the kids brought, them, brought those sheets home. The parents looked at it. They uh, saw areas uh, that they needed to be addressed, started scheduling conferences with, their, with the school, and uh, becoming more involved with their children's education. Uh, when that is not there, uh, for the schools that may not have uh, active PTOs, uh, PTAs and, and even PTOs to be able to, uh, to fill in that gap, uh, what's going to happen to those children when they get to, uh, to high school and to find out that the achievement gap that was recognized 
in elementary school and middle school still remain when they got to high school because the parents was were, were not informed about you know what they needed to look for and what question they need to ask because there's a lot of information mm -hmm. it could be very intimidating to parents you know they have busy schedules uh, they have a lot going on sometimes you only have a few minutes at night to uh, uh, to look at your child's book bag and to right. see what's going on and if you're in high school and middle school it's probably not going to come home in the book That's bag right. so we let them know that it's coming that you should receive it if you don't receive it go to the school and grab it so that you can know how your children are doing that's wonderful. And, and just for reference sake, um, uh, Jerry is referring to an article published on the Alabama School Connection website uh, about ACT Aspire results and yeah. how to use them. And I thank you for that. It's good mm -hmm. to know that the information is used. It's good information. Um, it's good that we have a PTA and a group of parents who's looking out for the rest mm -hmm. of us. You know, uh, I, I found that when I, in my own experience, um, as my children were coming through, there were parents who had been members of the PTO. Mm -hmm. We had PTOs in our school district that were mentoring the younger parents. Oh, yes. I don't know what I would have done <laughs> without that. And if I had not been a member of the PTO, and I wasn't always on a committee, I just went to the meetings. And, uh, and, and, and it's priceless. We have grandparents that are there right. uh, that realize, hey, yeah. the, the, it's for the benefit. Whatever we do is for the benefit of the children. Right. And if I have to take two or three kids under my wing until um, uh, you know the, the parent catch up, then they're willing to do that. Exactly. And as uh, as PTAs, as the Birmingham Council PTAs, we have a lot of grandparents now mm -hmm. that are raising children. Mm -hmm. So uh, we try to make sure that they stay informed. You know, we have Grandparents Day, Grandparents Training, right. where we train grandparents on what their rights and responsibilities are within oh, within the school. Uh, to make sure that everybody's speaking up for that child. I wasn't aware of that. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. Yeah, families come in all shapes and sizes, don't mm -hmm. they? And they do. you know, it's it's the support of the child um, is is what is at the heart of all this, and that's what I admire most about PTA. It keeps its focus. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, the teacher component. Mm -hmm. Okay, PTA, Very Parent part. Teacher Association. <laughs> Teachers become members. Um, I think that the, this is a personal reflection, but the best conversations often happen between parents and teachers. Correct. That's where the magic happens, is in the teacher's classroom with the parent's child. And so that partnership between the parents and teachers is absolutely crucial. And teachers are stressed. Mm -hmm. Teachers have very little time to form relationships with parents. So the PTA seems to be maybe a place where that can happen a little bit easier. Can you speak to that just a little bit? We do. We, uh, you know, we talked about that, that partnership with the school, specifically with the teacher. Uh, when uh, the parents, a lot of our parents work, mm -hmm. uh, so they're not able to be at school much. So we try to work with the teacher and the parents to identify uh, where they need to become engaged. Right. Um, because when the bell rings at 8 in the morning, you know, the teachers want to be busy uh, teaching and the parents are going to be busy working. And uh, we want to make sure, and there are certain, every parent is different. They have a, a different trigger that they want, um, that, that, that needs to happen when their child is affected. For some, it may be when they reach uh, a certain score, when, you know, when, a great, when their grades fall below so a, cert, a certain grade level, when they're in a, a specific activity. But we work with the parents and with the teachers to get them together to talk and to collaborate on uh, the expectations out of the classroom for the teacher, uh, the expectation from the parents on uh, on when they need to be informed, uh, what they uh, uh, what 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 the uh, what the lesson plan is going to cover, mm -hmm. what their children is going to learn, and then when 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 they do find points where they disagree, to get the parents to work and to talk to the teacher and not at the teacher to try to, uh, mm -hmm. to come to a resolution for the children. Working together for the betterment of the children because if, if a parent, if the only time that a parent shows up at the, at the school is, is, uh, is, is when something bad happens, then you know, that, that relationship is going to be strained. So we try to keep the parent engaged, keep, keep them connected to the classroom, to the teacher, 
so the teacher can continually feed information to the parents so that they can continue to make good decision education wise for their children but it all happens it has to happen with the uh, with, with the teacher right. we have to have a, a good working relationship with the teacher in order for the children to be successful and for the classroom to be a wonderful learning environment for the children. And fortunately, uh, for most of Birmingham, that happens uh, over and over again on a, uh, on a daily basis. And we work with the schools and with the principals to make sure that that happens. If, it tur if, you know, if there are issues that arise that are, that, that are uh, the local PTA uh, cannot handle, you know, the council is there to coach. Right. Right. and to work with the local units uh, to, you know, to make sure that that partnership component stays within that, within that school. That is such good news. I really like to hear about when partnerships go well. Mm -hmm. uh, we could, I'm sure we could sit here for a couple of hours and talk <laughs> about when it does go well. Mm -hmm. We often hear about when it doesn't. Right. So I really appreciate your being here today, Jerry, and telling us about the Birmingham PTA, um, Birmingham Council of PTAs. And if, for those of you who might not be in Birmingham, check out your local school district. See, do they, is it a PTO, is it a PTA? Both are membership organizations and both can use your support. So thanks again, Jerry, for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you.